Hi everyone, I'd like to look at a few methods that we use on the production line to make us faster when we draw. The first one is the crop box. Now most of us will be familiar with the crop box because we use it on a sheet when we publish a view to isolate a certain part of the drawing that we'd like to include on the sheet and exclude everything else. And that's of course the most obvious way in which we can use the drafting view. But note that Revit it tends to generate a lot of geometry. So this is a small skyscraper or small building, at least horizontally it's small. It could be something like 10 times bigger. And if it were, even on this computer, I would start struggling. All right. So, and also it's not a very um, developed model yet. So there's just a little bit of furniture and a few um, floors in here. So there's not a lot of equipment and a, and a lot of graphic things going up. It's not shown in a, in a fine detail view or anything like that. But just take it from me that sometimes it's better to work small in terms of what's visible on the screen because the computer doesn't have to interpret what it's seeing and show you a view. So for that reason, when we design, we sometimes say, I have a work in progress view like we have here, and then we duplicate that. And we say over here, just rename that. I'm just gonna call this work in progress window. Just meaning that we have, we're going to have a little window that we set up, hopefully at the beginning of the project before it gets too heavy. All right, so in anticipation of the project getting heavy, we then say, all right, we're going to create the, the view that we place on a sheet and that we might find somewhere over here. Um, so if we have our plan views and we've got our ground floor plan view, then that will sit nicely on a sheet over here and we'll leave it well alone. Uh, after it's created, we just leave it alone. This is where we're going to annotate things and you know put all the, all the details in about this view that we'd like to print or to publish at the end of the day. But when we're designing, we need to work with this model and it's going to waste a lot of time if I always have this really heavy floor plan and every time that I pan or move or zoom in or zoom out, the computer has to do all of this work. So instead what we do, like I said, we create a duplicate with a little window there. We switch on the crop region. Um, let's just take off the, um, the view template so we can have access to this. Let's switch on the crop window. And then we make the crop window smaller. Something about the size of the room maybe. And we now use this as a window to view this large model through. So then we can get a feel for, all right, I want to work in the room next door. We can just drag this crop view across. Can you see how we can just drag this crop view across? Move it into a different part of the model so that we can work in that part of the model. And that doesn't take the computer a lot of work. That doesn't, you know, it doesn't put a lot of strain on the, on the resources of the computer. The alternative of that is, of course, you can resize move it around but we don't make this into a large view because we know as soon as we do that it's going to become heavy and we don't want that okay so somewhere over here that will be the other rooms there we go there's my meeting room and that's great now the other thing that I want to show you has to do with the 3d view so in this file let me show you what the 3d view looks like it's quite a uh, quite a big building. Again, it's not exactly fleshed out yet, so there's not too much piping and MEP work and ducting and everything that's into this model yet, but if they were, this would be a very, very heavy model. My computer would struggle if I had all of these models linked in and, and I was busy operating like this. So we do the same thing as what we did with the crop view, only we, we exercise that in a 3D view. All right, so let's suppose that we're working in a large floor plan view on a large building and we then want to go and isolate or to work on a part of the model. Let's suppose that we're interested in this, this room over here or these, this furniture over here, this area over here, maybe around the door. All right, we'll select the door and then we'll just type in BX, Bravo X-Ray. And if you want to have the command for that, um, it's this little box over there. 
the, sec the selection box. Okay, and it shows you a little picture what it does. You select the element, you type BX, or you click on that little box icon over there, and it isolates that within a 3D view. It even shows you a nice little picture. Okay, and that's what we're going to do right now. We just type in Bravo X ray. And what it does is it opens up a 3D view in which that element is isolated with a little bit on the sides and at the top and at the bottom. And that then allows us to work with this element in 3D. And it's great because it's got toggles as well. So over here, or, or handles. So, so we can expand this a little bit and to say, all right, but look, I'm maybe interested in how this joins up to the roof over there. So I just expand this up to the roof, maybe a little bit more. Let's see, where is this? Ah, there we go. There's some beams. A little bit more. We haven't drawn that slab in yet. Okay. But at least we can see. Ah, there we go. All right. So clearly there's a slab missing over here, but we can see how the HVAC equipment is, is going to fit in here. And it's a very small part of the model, and unlike this really heavy 3D view, it doesn't take the computer a lot of work to interpret what it's seeing. The alternative to that, which is the counterintuitive, or, or, or I would say the wrong way to do it, is to start with a big 3D view, switch on the section box, and then try and manipulate it down to the element that you want to see. That's very inefficient. All right. You might also consider that you would like to see just a few of the uh, of the levels at a time. In which case, you could try and re re uh, restructure so you just see a little bit of the of the building at a time, and then rename that accordingly. All right. So those two methods. Remember them. Suppose that chair B X. X and that will then isolate that element in 3D. It makes it easy to work with. Really, really super efficient. Great to work with structural and uh, MEP systems, but as well as architectural. And there we can see how we can use those tools. So when you get onto a production line, especially if you're not used to large models, look like a pro and use those two tools and everybody else around you will think, geez, that's an experienced Revit user. They definitely know what they're doing. Well, Enjoy these new tools that I've uh, displayed over here. And uh, until next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.